Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Definition and this is the channel where we explain it so you don't have to. Men in Black International is a soft reboot of the franchise that, for better or worse, tries to reinvigorate the franchise with a new cast of characters and locales. Throughout this video I'll be breaking down everything that you need to know about the ending of the film as well as giving my thoughts on it. This is full spoilers ahead, so if you don't want to know anything about the movie, then I highly recommend that you turn off now. With that out the way, I just want to give a huge thank you for clicking this video. I hope you enjoy it. Now sit back, relax, and let's get into my breakdown of MIB International. The majority of Men in Black International is pretty straightforward. It's a typical affair that we've come to expect from the franchise, with the world being on the brink of destruction, yada yada yada. By the film's end, Agents H and M have finally been caught up with by the two alien twins that have been trying to track them down for the majority of the film. However, in a last minute turn of events, they are shot from behind. In the film's finale, we learn that the true threat this entire time has been High T, played by Liam Neeson, who is actually actually just an offshoot of the big villainous alien, the Hive. Years earlier, the Hive absorbed High T and has used him to infiltrate the British branch of the organisation. There was a huge outcry for Neeson to be cut from the pod after remarks that he made earlier in the air, however it's pretty clear why this couldn't be done as he is massively integral to the movie and internet cancellations only tend to last two weeks anyway, so I doubt anyone still cares. This of course all ties back to two years earlier when T and H, not to be confused with H from Line of Duty, who just so happen to look like Liam Neeson, who plays T, oh it just gets so confusing, stop the hive from destroying the earth. On the surface it seemed like both managed to do this and throughout the organisation they're regarded as heroes. However the events, or rather as H remembers them, played out very differently in reality. During the fight, T was absorbed and H's memories were erased so that he never thought anything was off. From inside MIB International, High T, not to be confused with Mr T, has been creating a weapon capable of destroying the world once and for all. After taking the weapon from H&M, not to be confused with the shop H&M, T travels to the Eiffel Tower, revealing his truly terrifying form and activates a wormhole that will allow the rest of the hive to come to Earth. H&M tried to stop this from happening after discovering that the tower is actually a gateway for all extraterrestrial life, but they're pretty easily beaten by T, though Pawnee comes in and saves H&M, who used the weapon to distract and kill the hive. In the end, H is promoted to head of the British branch, and M is fully allowed into the service and sent home back to MIB NY. The two go on a road trip together with Pawnee, and you get the feeling that they may be going on another adventure very soon, Probably in the Marvel movies though, because this film is bombing critically right now. Going forward though, if there is a sequel, I can see the two doing a franchise first and possibly travelling to space. Whilst the four films in the franchise have all taken place on Earth, there isn't really a reason for the NY agent to team up with the head of the British branch unless something big is called for. It would definitely add an extra dimension to the franchise and I would love to see this play out in future films as the series definitely needs to do something different to stop it being stale. Now, is this movie as bad as everyone is saying? Well, I don't think so. It's nothing out of the ordinary and by no means does it live up to the original movie, but there's still some fun to be had here. This is a kids film and whilst that shouldn't really be an excuse for phoning it in, it's not going after Oscars and this is simply trying to inject some new blood into the universe. Overall, I did have fun with the film and whilst June has been a pretty bad month for movies so far, I don't think that the blame could be put on MIB's shoulders. In the end, this is probably the second best entry in the series and I kinda wanna see more from the two down the line. That's why it gets a seven out of 10. Obviously, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the film and what you took from it. Comment below and let me know and if you enjoyed this video then please like it and make sure you check out my breakdown of the Avengers Endgame timeline which will be linked at the end. This is a channel for people who are mad into movies so if that's the kind of thing you like, hit subscribe. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this, I've been Definition, you've been the best and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.